This is Eric. How's it going, guys? So, for the benefit of you hot rodders, I'm going to do an unboxing video of a set of Oldsmobile aluminum cylinder heads made by Speedmaster79, who, by the way, used to be known as Procom. So, follow along as we check these babies out. Well, they come in a box. You open it up. You got two more boxes. And within each box, a cylinder head wrapped in bubble wrap. After peeling off the bubble wrap, here's what it looks like. My initial reaction is that it's actually a pretty good casting. The, the finish is very smooth. like it's been uh, CNC profiled and here is how the port sizes measure up the next thing I notice is they've got Gila coils in some of the threads as a matter of fact the rocker studs have Gila coils and they are 7 16 threads whereas the stock was a 5 16th so that makes it I guess a lot stronger the exhaust manifold bolt holes are also helicoiled. coiled I like that um, the intake bolt holes are not helicoiled. coiled um, either are the accessory mounting holes. Okay, so don't laugh at me. Um, this is not a machinist grade straight edge, but it does give me an indication of how well they've machined these seats. Um, I can barely fit a 10 thousandths feeler gauge into the areas where I see an air gap between the valve and the straight edge. So they've actually got the seats uh, at a very consistent depth. Using a profilometer, we can now do a surface roughness measurement, and it looks like it's 24 micro inches. It also looks like they've improved the oil drain back. Um, you can see here how it goes through maybe a half inch hole and it meets up with the other hole that drains into the lifter valley. So that yeah, looks okay. The next thing I want to check is the head thickness. Let's use my calipers. All right, the first head I'm getting 3.863. Go to the next one and 3.864. Very consistent. Also, noting the etching on the cylinder head, looks to be a part number and a date. If I'm reading this right, this might be March 2nd at 3. 54 p.m. maybe and this guy is March 2nd at 1 30 I'm guessing so these heads are at the same birth date basically it's hard to see but looking at the water coolant passages uh, they look very nice I don't see any casting flash This guy looks pretty good too. Uh, looking down the ports. You can see a little bit of a parting line. Hope you can see that. But the ports look pretty good. Okay, if I go and finger the port, 
pardon my expression. Uh, very smooth. The, the short turn radius in there is not very sharp. It's a gentle turn. Feels very good. The exhaust port, uh, same thing. Very smooth uh, transition. Okay, the ports are full of mineral spirits. Hope you can see it there. And I do not see any leakage. So far, so good. I'm very impressed. Let's do the exhaust ports now. Okay. The exhaust ports are full of mineral spirits. And lo and behold, there are no leaks. No leaks at all. So here is a tip on how to get a valve out of a head without cutting the valve seal. And it involves heat shrink tubing. Simply put the heat shrink over an old valve and heat it up carefully without damaging it. So now you have a straw that you can put over the valve and slide down between the valve and the valve seal. Slide this thing out and this sharp edge won't cut the valve seal. Well, with the valves out, we can look at the bowls and the seats. They're not bad. There's the exhaust port. And there's the in inlet port. So, if I feel this, it's actually pretty smooth. Uh, I could probably do some uh, minor polishing, but uh, I'm not sure it'll affect my warranty. Since uh, the box does say it has a one year warranty. Using my calipers, I would say the intake seats are about 50 thousandths. And the exhaust seats are about 80. Using some thousand grit silicon carbide lapping compound, I'm able to determine where the valve is touching the seat, and it looks like it's in the right place. I'm also happy to see that Speedmaster decided to use valve spring seats in the valve spring pockets. Knowing that my comp cam's installed height micrometer is off by ten thousandths, I come up with an installed height on the intake valve of 1.815. And the exhaust valve installed height is very close at uh, 1.813. Here is a look at the valve locks. They're 10 degrees and they appear to be machined. There's the retainers. I guess they're of high quality. Using a Rimmick valve spring tester, I can find the
spring force at various heights. So if I've got a roughly 1.8 installed height and my retainer is 200 thousandths thick, I can figure that a two inch height on this device will mimic my seat pressure and that gives me about oh, maybe 110 pounds and if I've got a half inch lift cam that gives me uh, open pressure of about 255 by the way these heads take long reach spark plugs and they look like this when fully seated. Using a glass burette holding mineral spirits, a spark plug fully seated, I come up with a chamber volume of 79 cc's. And this exhaust port measures out at 107 cc's. And finally, the intake ports come in at a whopping 190 cc's. Looking at the valves, there they are. It's neck down. Um, it's got a, I don't know, some kind of unique finish on the back of the valve. If I go to the tip, has a different color. I'm assuming it's uh, chrome plating to uh, reduce the wear when the rock rim rubs on the valve tip. There's the margin. They appear to be stainless because a magnet won't stick to them. And if I go to a steel valve, like the one right here, that's a steel valve. Look how the magnet grabs it. So, there's the valves. So the uh, last thing I wanna cover are the valve guides. They appear to be some kind of a magnesium bronze alloy. And sometimes they have spiral cuts and sometimes they don't. These are just straight with no spiral cuts inside the guide. And now looking at the valve to valve guide clearance, uh, I've got the valve out about 600 thousandths. And if I rock it, I guess it's, what is that, about six thousandths back and forth. So these feel pretty, pretty snug in the guide. And there you go, there's my unboxing review of these cylinder heads. I feel a lot better about these because I bought these the evening of Black Friday with about three or four beers in me. And the next morning I was regretting buying them. But now I am I think I'm happy I bought these things. I got them for $13.50 shipped from Jegs. And from my review, they seem to be a pretty good cylinder head.